Hello and happy December. I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory, and we have a new paper published. It's titled Associations Between Chronic Pain and Fatigue Severity with Weather and Air Pollution Among Females with Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, or MECFS. And this was written by Chloe Jones, Olivia Haskin, and myself. I also want to give uh, thanks to Gregory Lashley, who was an undergrad at the time the study was conducted, and he initiated these analyses. So this is an open access paper, which means anyone can download it, anyone can read it. The link to this paper is in the description. As scientific papers go, this is one of the easier ones to read. There's not a great deal of technical language, so check it out if you want. And if that topic weather and pollution affecting pain and fatigue in MECFS. If that sounds familiar, it's because I presented the preliminary analyses on this channel about three or four months ago. So it's moved from preliminary analyses to being published fairly quickly. It took about three, four months. Now, sometimes the paper, when it's published, it doesn't look like the preliminary, the preliminary analyses, and that's because of the process of peer review. So two to three scientists will look at the paper, they'll critique it, they'll make suggestions for improvements, and sometimes they have very few comments, and sometimes they'll send 10 pages of things that need to be changed. And in those cases, the final paper can be unrecognizable from what we had initially intended. Now in this case, with this paper, the critiques were pretty light. Things like they wanted a word in the title changed. I may not agree with the change in all cases or like the change, but we typically acquiesce to the reviews of the peer reviewers as long as the dis disagreement's not critical to the interpretation or the meaning of the paper. Now, you might be able to look at the title and guess what word they want to change, but anyway, they approved of our analyses, they improved they approved of our interpretations. And so the process in getting this one published was pretty easy. So if you're interested in hearing more about the results, uh, check out my earlier video about uh, this data set and the meaning behind the analyses. And I'll link that at the end of this video so it'll pop up. You can click on that and kind of get a more in-depth uh, overview of these analyses. The main finding, the very simplified major finding, so I'm not going to repeat the earlier video, but the, the main thing was that on days where there are more particulates in the air, so there's more pollution in the air, pain severity and fatigue severity is worse in individuals with MECFS. So said in a slightly different way, if you have MECFS, your pain and fatigue severity may be affected by the changes of air quality. Uh, this is a map right here of particulate matter in the United States. I took this uh, about an hour ago, so this is accurate as the time of this video. Green is good, yellow is fair, red is poor, with darker red being uh, worse and worse. Uh, you can look this up anywhere in the world using, I used purpleair.com for this. I'll link that site in the description. There are lots of other tools as well, including government tools that do similar things. Now in this study, we just focused on the area around my institution, which I just drew in this circle. And this region where I'm at, it tends to have good air quality, at least in terms of pollutants. There, there are certainly allergens at certain times of the year, but right now we're just looking at pollutants. And so really, if we're looking at the relationship between air quality and MECFS severity, researching around this area is not really the optimal test of how pollution affects pain and fatigue. If we really wanted to test that relationship, we would need to send air quality monitors to participants' homes. And it would be nice to get people across the United States, or as I mentioned in my earlier video, across the world. That would be great. We could get all, we could get the entire range of air quality. But if we really, really want to know the relationship between symptoms and air quality, we actually have to know not just the general 
uh, air quality, which we get from weather stations, but we need to send the monitors to people's homes so we can see what's happening inside the house because most people spend more time inside than they do outside. So we need to know the indoor air quality. You know, we can't tell the weather stations that we use for this study. It doesn't tell us if you have combustion particulates in your house or mold spores or toxic gases, we have to have an indoor monitor. So this is not the ultimate test of the relationship between air quality and symptoms, but it is the first one to my knowledge showing that air quality is a factor in your MECFS severity. So at least it gets the ball rolling and says this is something we may need to look at more closely. And, you know, we've known about the relationship between air quality and disease severity for a long time in other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. But again, this is the first time we've seen it in MECFS. Now, how strong is the effect? I don't really know. Uh, mainly for the same reason that I just mentioned uh, about 30 seconds ago, because I don't know the actual air that the participants are breathing in. I don't know how much exposure to the outside air they have. And so if we really wanted to answer that question, like how big of a difference air quality makes, we're going to have to do a much better job at measuring the air quality around the participants where they spend most of their time. But we do know that air quality is important even for perfectly healthy individuals. Poor air quality causes inflammation, whether or not you have MECFS, and it can cause lung disease. That's why we have all these weather stations. That's why that's why pollutants are measured, uh, because it it can make a very big deal or can be a big deal. And it's not surprising that as air quality worsens, your MECFS is going to worsen as well. So the bottom line is, you know. I don't think that air quality is going to be the answer to resolving your MECFS or fibromyalgia or Gulf War illness. That seems very unlikely, but it is something that can make a difference in how severe your symptoms are. And so, you know, know your region air quality. If you're in a region that is stable, good. There are regions like that, great. You can be in a region that's in a stable way, bad. Uh, then you need to know that. And then most regions kind of fluctuate and you need to know, are you in a time of the year where the air quality is worse than another time? And that may help you know when your symptoms are worse on some days or some times of the year than others. Um, you may want to consider monitoring your indoor air quality. Uh, there are lots of devices for doing that. I don't uh, have enough information on which ones are the best to make any recommendations, but do look into that. I'm sure there's lots of other videos from other um, people on YouTube talking about what devices you can use. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, make sure you keep an eye on your HEPA filters inside of your house if you have those. I, I don't think I mentioned this in the previous video that I did on this a few months ago, but uh, I rented a fairly nice, fairly new house, like 10 years old. And then I went to replace the HEPA filters, and without exaggeration, there was probably 2.5 inches of stuff built up on the HEPA filter. It looks to me as if they hadn't changed it in the whole 10 years since the house had been built. It had all kinds of stuff. A lot of animal pet stuff had accumulated there. Anyway, not good. So definitely watch out for that. Check the help of filters. Now, I'm not an environmental scientist, and so I don't want to get too far outside of my area, which is more uh, neural stuff and inflammation. So that overlaps a little bit, but I can't really tell you what to do to, to test for and to manage air quality and how to test for things like uh, mold spores. So I'm gonna stop there because again, I'm getting outside of my area, but it is safe to say that tracking and ensuring good quality, those are worthwhile pursuits if you have a chronic condition that fluctuates in severity. So that's it. Uh, I just wanted to announce our new paper. This is This is what labs do. We write and put out papers and we hope to use that so we and others can create treatments and resolve these disorders. We're pushing out a lot of papers right now. We're really in a paper writing stage in my laboratory. Uh, you're gonna see more papers coming out with neuroimaging, both MRI and PET, and uh, a lot of immune papers as well. So keep an eye out 
for those, just keep an eye out on this uh, channel and I will be sure to tell you all about them. So I will talk to you soon.